All right. And our final entrant of the show coming in at number 91 with 61 points, L.A. Park. And he was on Mongoose's list coming in at 39. So we will let the Mongoose take it away. So here's the, the, the reason that I have L.A. Park this high is because, uh, as I had said in my initial disclaimer, if you are Observer Hall of Fame, then you are above everybody else. And the reason why is that uh, you have been vetted by people that know way more than I do. And L.A. Park is one of the people that made that. Um, he, uh, my first memories of L.A. Park were as La Parca in uh, WCW in the late 90s. Um, was he in uh, Revenge? Was he in Revenge or was it the one afterwards? Oh, man, that's a great question. Because I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I can't he, remember he's in one of those that. games. He's in one of those games and he's great. Um, and so, like, the, the, to come out, and you play the electric or the air guitar on a chair. You're the chairman. Um, all that stuff, dude. Like, such a great gimmick at the time. And you think that he's so slapstick uh, because of the way that he was sort of presented in that, you know, cruiserweight hour in those nitro days. Um, and then you come to find out that uh, he is a, you know, very, very decorated Mexican wrestling, you know, superstar. He was in a match uh, whenever I was an honor club subscriber, whenever ring of honor had the box and all those other guys. Um, I heard over and over again that I needed to watch the uh, Triple Mania show. There was a four-way with him, um, with uh, Pentagon, with Psycho Clown, um, and another fella. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, it was a masky bloodbath. Uh, you know, Spanish commentary the whole way through. Like one of those things where you know you're just you're just digging it. You're you're living in the uh, the environment and and you know absorbing the, basically the way that it's meant to be um with the uh you know the homegrown commentary and everything else like nothing is made for you 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 know you're sort of uh you have your glasses on uh through the eyes of the other people and I, dude that was a ball watching that match like i was very glad that i did um there was an iconic feud uh, and I believe that it was with Psycho Clown. And I, if I'm wrong, then I'm very sorry. But I know that there was a big either mask versus mask or mask versus hair match that L.A. Park was supposed to have with somebody. Um, and this was going to be like the match of the century. And this was in 2020 or 2021. And so for him to be 15 years past his WCW run and to be able to have that kind of clout uh, and again, and to make the Observer Hall of Fame, uh, this is where I defer to people that know more than me. And the reason that he is rated so high, again, is that if you were in the Observer Hall of Fame for me, you're above everybody else on my list. Because those people that vote know better than I. Uh, and so L.A. Park, you deserve it. Also, I have an L.A. Park mask upstairs. Um, I cannot wear Lucha masks. Uh, at first, the first one I wore was a uh, Juice and Thunder Liger mask, actually. Um, scared the bejesus out of my uh, baby mongoose. Um, and so I wasn't allowed to wear that after uh, a picture at Halloween whenever she was uh, a newborn uh, for her first Halloween. Uh, but my La Parca mask is still upstairs, waiting to be worn. Um, if she ever lets me, I will. Uh, I will go in the full skeleton gear uh, for Halloween. Um, this year, I will be uh, Mario and uh, she'll be princess peach uh so if i ever can get out of dressing like her i'll be la parka so you mean that much to me la park <laughs> there's actually a fantastic photo of that first all out uh of myself in the jushin liger mask and uh chig in the la parka mask <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep yep that exists it's it you know i i also i have two i have two lucha masks i've got an el santo mask and I've got the uh, I've got a, a, a LA bark mask too. Yeah. So it's funny that uh, it's funny that we both have that. I didn't know we both had that. It's awesome. I, I you know this, the same thing I was saying about Chono earlier. Um, I think a lot of us got into 
the Lucha style based on those guys coming over to do the WCW run yeah. whenever the Mexican economy wasn't doing well, right? And, and you know, La Parker was one of those guys that came in, just an unbelievable costume, so over the top. The guy had a chair. He's playing a chair like air guitar. He's dancing around like a maniac. He's standing on the chair doing the crazy dance. He's bashing people over the head with a chair. I mean, that that was just like so awesome to see that. And that kind of, you know, just like with Chono, that's what kind of got me into wanting to see a lot more of the international product. Um, and I know the I know the belts in uh, the belts in Mexico are not kind of they're really not treated the same way within the promotions as what they are in Japan or in the United States. But but all that said, I mean, L.A. Park still still the AAA champ. I mean, at one point, man, and that's a big deal. It's a big deal to be the the, the face of the promotion, no matter where you're at, man. And, I, and that's really, really awesome. He's in the Observer Hall of Fame. Um, just such an iconic character. When you think about that late not that late nineties WCW whenever they were really on fire and that dude's out there just crushing people with chairs. I mean, so it's just so so fun and so awesome, and everybody got into it so quick. Yeah, some some matches that I have here uh, is from November eighteenth episode of Nitro where he defeated Juventud Guerrera. That got a three and a half stars uh, by Dave. Um, if you want to check out uh, Super Brawl from ninety seven. Uh, there was a six-man tag with Conan, La Parca, and Volano 4, and they defeated uh, Ciclope, Juventud Guerrero, and Supercalo in a three in a three-quarter star match. And then on there's another Nitro one. Th- these Nitros, they uh, they're so good. The there's he has a four-star match in a six-person tag on the May 26th episode of Nitro from 1997, where Hector Garza, Juventud Guerrero, and Supercalo face Ciclope, Damien, and La Parca. And so, like, there's they rattled some off. Another one, this got a four and a quarter star, was from the uh, Bash at the Beach 97. That was another six-person tag with Hector Garza, Juventud Guerrera, and Lismark Jr. versus La Parca, Psychosis, and Volano 4. So all of this stuff from WCW is highly regarded. His sold-out 98 match in an eight-person tag there's so much good stuff. I will not mention his Super Bowl uh, match versus Disco Inferno because fuck it. <laughs> but I mean, you gave you gave me chills just just mentioning all those people gave me chills because I, I I just remember just them those guys flying around all over the place and killing each other on those nitros. Man, what a great what a time to be alive that was, man. To be a, to be a fan and watching those matches every week. Yeah, like, and you know what this this era is as much as everybody specifically the host of this podcast complains about AWTV. TV. It will be looked at the same way when we look at the random Nick Jackson and uh, you know, Ray Phoenix and orange Cassidy versus, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like to me, we we're seeing the modern iteration of that now. Um, and it's, it's really awesome. It really is. And that's the, when, when people talk about the nostalgia for WCW, that's where AEW does hold up is that your TV delivers these matches that are pay-per-view quality every week. And even though the storyline, you want to tell me the storyline was super callow, LA park, uh, Hector Garza, but there isn't one. There's not, it doesn't exist. But you watch that match and you're going to say, wow, that was great. That's the way that these dynamites are going to be viewed, um, is that people are going to, in 20 years, look back and say, holy cow, wrestling TV then was something, wasn't it? They are, because we we do see that every week. Even looking at the stuff that he's done recently, it's just amazing to think, uh, that this guy's still going and he's still killing it in the ring. I mean, even, even recently, and he looks terrible yeah, and, and he yeah. looks absolutely terrible. He does not look like anybody that should be able to do anything physical without immediately getting an IV and a, and a, and a yeah. oxygen mask. Yeah. But that, um, that triple mania show um, from a month and a half ago with him and Adonis and Sam Adonis is really good. And that, that's, that's Corey Graves, brother. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but it's um it's LA park psycho clown Roosh and, and Sam Adonis, you know, the, the mass first hair four way got rated really high. Um, and then even even before that, the Triple Mania, the Tijuana match from July, um, the same guys only in the tag. And that was a four-way match 
um, at the August show, but then the July show, it was a, it was a tag team match. It came, went to a draw, which set up the August show, man. So, I mean, you think about highly rated matches this guy has had. And even before that, I mean, the, the, the match was uh, blue demon junior DMT Azul and LA versus LA park and Rouge four and a half star match from April, man. I mean, like we're, we're talking about April, July, August of this year. We're talking about that. And this guy is still having killer matches versus matches that, were, that we were talking about from freaking Nitro from 96. I mean, it's just, it's amazing to think about that a guy that has a career that is extended that long and it's still just so entertaining and so good in the ring and just in there killing it, man.